we have to recognize and be, be okay with the idea that no matter how bad we like it or want it, the dog is the one that will dictate when it happens. All right, guys, welcome back. Uh, back to back, we're recording here, so I don't know how quickly Ben will turn these out, but we just did one, and I'm piggybacking it with this. It was questions from Instagram. This is another Instagram question. I, I talked about it a bit. Uh, there was a question regarding needing to get something done in time for a field trial. I'm going to read that one to you right now. We're going to we're going to use that as our as our um, question or our topic that we'll be discussing in this podcast, um, and then we kind of we kind of link those two together. But here's the message. It says, "Good evening, Jeremy. Wanted to seek your advice on water introduction, and I think this is a good one too because of the time of the year. Um, being summer, uh, great time to introduce our dogs." Uh, to water, provided that the setup is good, and we'll, we're, that's what we're going to talk about. So, uh, it says, I wanted to seek your advice on water introduction. I have a seven month old Bracco Italiano who is very reluctant around water. I've tried different bumpers, toys, treats, and other dogs he's attached to. Building frustration watching other dogs having fun before getting his turn. Dead and live birds waded out into the water, taking him with me. He swims back so he can swim, but he will not go in willingly. He will cross a creek as long as the water is below his chest level. Is it just keep trying with lots of praise every time he gets in there? It, every time he gets in, or is there some other insights or tips you can give me? I ultimately want him to be able to retrieve game for water, and he will be taking a NAVDA NA test this fall for which he has to swim. I did a brief search of your podcast and YouTube videos. If I missed content already, that you have on this, I'm sorry, but I'd appreciate a link or direction to search if you've already made content. I don't know if we've talked, I would imagine we talked about it in the past. I know we showed it, one, I, know, I think we showed in the Bella Be Good series, I think we showed Bella's intro to water. Um, I'm sure we've probably done it in other things. Every dog's a little bit different, so I don't know that I would say, oh, go watch Bella Be Good, because you've probably done everything that we did with Bella Be Good, or with Bella, and she took to the water very naturally. She liked it. So we're going to talk specifically about yours. This is we're going to start it out with. Here is why this is this is not the topic we're going to talk about because we'll talk about it in more detail because there's lots of different points to make I think with it. But this is just one reason I'm not a big fan of testing and trialing with dogs. I think we put a large amount of pressure on ourselves to meet to meet and exceed certain standards by certain time frames. Uh, I have no problem with standards. I have no problem with means of evaluating dogs I think it's important to a degree uh, provided it's realistic and doesn't erode or take away from what I think is necessary from a hunting dog standpoint now that's me talking as a guy who likes hunting dogs I'm not saying there's anything wrong with trials and competitions as long as they don't take away from the hunting part of it and I think that's a big problem with with some of these trials but that's a different topic um, we're going to talk specifically on this. This, so you've got, it said you have a, a test this fall. And so this fall, I'm guessing, let's just say it's, it's this September. I don't know when it is, but right now it's middle of July. So we got middle of August, middle of September, uh, uh, two months away and it's, we're into fall. So it's maybe a month and a half away. Could be as early as a month and a half away. And I'm reading your message here, and I'm reading. I'm going right back to the very beginning, second line. It says, "I have a seven-month-old Bracco Italiano," and I'm looking at that and going, "There's why one reason that it's really big that I think you've had a seven-month-old puppy. I, I mean, seven-month-old puppy. It's really young, and so you, you know." And I don't know, I'm not real familiar with the Bracco Italiano. I don't know that breed very well. I don't know what it's typically like from a water perspective. Um, it's a NAVDA dog, apparently, you know, falls into that versatile hunting dog. Everything I know about versatile hunting dogs would, would lead one to believe that the water should not be an issue. I mean, the ver versatility part, I think, is that's, that's what their, that group is built that around. So, um, I, so I'm assuming that water is not like a uh, something that's extremely out of the ordinary for that breed. So, but I, I in you know I've got plenty of experience with retrievers, and from the, for the most part, 
I've seen most retrievers not have issues with water. Uh, that's not a rule. That's not like all of them. I, I know I've got a really good friend of mine that has a, a, a litter mate to a dog that I that I have, Spry. Uh, my buddy Chris has a, a, a dog named Fee, and she swims like she's never. She swims like she's real uncomfortable swimming. Like I, I don't know how to even describe it. It's a. It looks like a kid that is very uncoordinated and splashing around in the water. Like that's that's how she swims now. Could she get better at swimming and will she get better at swimming as time goes on? Yeah, probably, but she's four years old. So I, I don't know that she's ever going to be a real fish. But I think one of the things about any introduction to anything is we have to recognize and be, be okay with the idea that no matter how bad we like it or want it, the dog is the one that will dictate when it happens. So. You know, I can I can relate to this in some to some degree with Spry. Spry didn't make good retrieves until she was about ten months old, for a variety of different reasons. I don't think I I consider I can where I when I first considered her kind of retrieving pretty well, she was about ten months old. She's a Labrador retriever. So, I I yes, it stressed me out early on, and then about the time I quit worrying about it is about the time it took care of itself. And so the things, it sounds like you're trying everything and you're probably doing it right. I really think you got to go in the water with them. Like I, I like going in the water with the dog. I think that I have a lot of luck when the dogs swim with me. And so I would, instead of carrying the dog out and setting it down so that it potentially feels nervous or panicky and wants to swim back to shore and go, keep me away from you. Like that to me is risky. If they don't want to swim, I'm not going to take them out in the water and make them swim. I'm going to continue to want to make it seem real appealing. And th this time of year is great because when I go up to the cabin, I like spending some time in the water. Uh, Mason's, my son's got a little pup named Chief, nine weeks old. Uh, yeah, well, nine weeks old or ten weeks old? No, nine weeks old on Tuesday. It was nine weeks old on Tuesday. Gonna be ten weeks old this coming Tuesday. Hasn't swam yet. Been up to the lake, walked in the water, hasn't swam yet. First time my son was up there, he wanted to take that dog swimming. He really wanted to see that puppy swim. And if he carried it out, I think he'd have swam just fine. And he might have been just fine with it. He might have turned around and came running back in, but he might not have. And so I looked at him, Mason, and I said, just be patient. He'll go in when he's ready to go in. There's other dogs running around. With that little puppy, I don't want him running around with the other dogs because I'm afraid that other dogs might step on him and make him a little nervous about the water. So I'm not, I'm not in a rush. And I don't think you should be either because let's go back to this. You have a seven-month-old puppy. Probably just got done teething. And probably not necessarily, I don't know, but maybe not as likely to be the water lover that some dogs are. So accepting and being okay with the idea of, you know what, it might take them a little bit longer. But not giving up, not being frustrated, not, and I, I read through this and I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna read through this here again. Um, you have tried different bumpers. So let's just say you've tried three different bumpers. That's probably not that many. So let's say there's three. Three different bumpers, toys, treats, other dogs, building frustration, dead and live birds, waited out in the water with them, taking them with you. That's 10. That's 10 different ways you've tried to get the dog in the water. So 10 different ways, the dog is seven months old. I would say I wouldn't even be thinking about it as far as concern until the dog's maybe five, six months old. Like, if he doesn't want to go in the water when he's four months old, fine, no problem. That's 16 weeks. I wouldn't be worried about it if it was a lab. I wouldn't be worried about it. I wouldn't be giving up on it. I wouldn't be frustrated about it, but I wouldn't be worried about it. I'd continue to do things. Because the, you might have tried, you did 10 different things and you've checked them off the list already. Those 10 things might, one of those 10 things might be exactly what you need. It's exactly what that dog will want to do. 
It's just the thing hasn't lined up with the right time yet as far as he's old enough, confident enough, sh sure about the situation. You, so let me make you feel better. You've done everything right to this point. Just keep doing what you're doing. And when the time is right, the dog will go in the water. Take that pressure off and start thinking about it instead of, what am I doing wrong? Start saying, boy, I'm doing some things that are right. You, you, if the dog isn't afraid of the water, you've done everything right. Now, if you're not telling me the, the whole story, if you're saying the dog panics when he sees the water, the dog freaks out and runs and won't come back to me. If that part of the story is there and it's not being shared with me, then I'm not going to be able to say it with such confidence to say you've done everything right. Because you haven't if that's the case. If, you, if you've gotten a dog to the point where they're afraid of the water, you've got a bigger hill to climb. It doesn't mean that it can't happen. It just means you've got more things that you've got to figure out. Be patient. At seven months old, be patient. And as far as NAVDA and water tests go, don't worry about them. You might not do it this year. Oh, I don't know how your tests are set up. If you have to do the water, if you have to do the water, I'm going to say, do it next year when, when he's ready to swim. Do it in the spring. I don't know if they have spring events or not. Do it in the spring when he's ready. If you can do stuff without the water, do that. Then you still get your fix. You still get your your event. You still get your exposure to it. Hell, if maybe they maybe you don't have the option. You have to do water, but you know he's not going to do it. So you go to the thing and you say, "We're going to do everything but the water." And when they say look at you and say, "Well, you can't do that," you say, "Yes, I can. I'm not here. I, I don't have to do it the way you're telling me to do it." I, or you got to ask yourself, "Why are you doing it?" Because I I always I. I always wonder about that. Why do people do these things? Is it for the dog or is it for themselves? Because if the answer isn't for the dog, then I don't know that I can really support the idea of it in general. If it's to get the dog better, well, go do what the dog can do and have the understanding of you're going with a really young dog. And for whatever you're going to get out of it, you're going to get out of it. And it's got to be positive. It's got to be something good. Where... I don't know that taking young dogs to things that they're not prepared for, it'd be like taking a dog hunting. I, I would never take a dog hunting that I didn't think was prepared for it. And I think people say it a lot of times, well, what have I got to lose? My, my question is, what have you got to gain? So you've got, there's a lot to lose. There's a lot of things that could go wrong that, that you don't necessarily have the control of. And then frustration sets in and then pressure comes in because you're hunting with a buddy and you don't want to look like an idiot and you don't want your dog to look bad and so then you get upset and I've seen so many young dogs that are in positions to fail because their owners would like to see something more so than the dog being ready for it so I, I just think that this has to be a moment where you look at it and go well maybe he's not ready and that's okay because eventually he will be. And that and, and again, what's the purpose? What's the reasoning for it? If it's to make the dog better, that's why you're going to these events. Great. It's not going to make him any better to take him to something that he's not prepared for or ready for. And and like and I've said this, and now I'm a broken record again. No matter how bad we like it, no matter how bad we want it, we can't force our dogs to do things when it's the issue comes into maturity, physical or mental, or at times it's both. So, yeah, I know. I just watched a guy. I, here's, here, I can put myself in your shoes. I just watched a guy. Uh, I follow him on Instagram. I think he's a really good trainer. Uh, I think he's got some very, very good dogs. And I just watched a video, and I, I commented on it to him. It was a story, and I, I sent him a message, and I said, great looking dogs really nice and he had these two pups and I don't know how old they were I'm guessing maybe 12 weeks old but they they're a red one and a black one and he made some really nice simple retrieve mark, marked retrieves with it and dog picked him up brought him back just really nice little puppy and and he did everything right and he's down on his knees and the dog comes in and beautiful just the way it should look and I thought it was a great looking that was great 
And, I, and so I sent him a message. I said, man, I think that was great. And I don't know him personally. And he messaged me back. He said, I really appreciate it. You got a good looking group of dogs yourself, blah, 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 blah. Like just, I admire what he's doing there. And I thought about it for a second because I took Chief, my son's dog, who's nine weeks old this week, down into our shop. Uh, I tried doing it in the driveway and it, I had, he had zero interest in retrieving a dummy, a puppy dummy to me. So, uh, okay. He, I mean, he actually wanted to run away with it a little bit. So we, I nixed that pretty quickly and then went down to our shop and I closed the doors and I had a little puppy bumpy down there and I threw it, a, threw it for him and he chased it down and he picked it up and he looked at me and he kind of brought it to me and he kind of didn't bring it to me and then he kind of laid down and eventually he came to me and I did it one more time and that one was a little bit better, but I mean, not a retrieve. It wasn't a retrieve. It was, he chased it down, he picked it up, that was good. And he, eventually he got to me and I kind of corralled him in and held on to him and I petted his chest a little bit and I eventually took the dummy from him, gave it back to him and then I took it away. And then I said, uh, I think we'll wait a little while. He just wasn't ready for it. And he wasn't doing it well. And I watched that video today of that guy and I went, Man, I really wish my dog was doing that. I wish Mason's dog was doing that. I wish I wish Chief was making retrieves like that. But he's not. And that's okay. Because I really quickly reminded myself, yeah, he's only nine weeks old. I know what he's made up uh, from a genetic standpoint. I know what he's got. Uh, he's not ready for what I was asking him to do. Not afraid to try stuff. Not upset when it doesn't work. And not afraid to say, I think I'll just wait a little while. So I know you've got a seven month old dog. I can see a picture of it here. Um, it looks, it looks, it looks relatively old. You know, it looks like it's older than seven months old. If I'm looking at the right dog, but it's not, it's seven months old. So who cares? S just slow down. Keep going in the water. You got a couple months yet of nice weather. I don't know where you're from, but up here we've got a couple months yet of nice weather. We'll be able to swim. Keep bringing the dog to the water. Keep keep playing with them. Keep trying one through ten. Try it all again, and eventually, it'll, eventually something's going to happen where the dog's going to go. It's worth it. It's worth it to go in that water and swim. Feels good. Might be really hot. That might be it. Maybe it hasn't been hot enough. Uh, I don't know what it is. You know, try different depths. Try different. I, I like the idea of you said you're taking him across creeks. He'll come as long as he doesn't have to go below, deeper than his chest. So keep doing that. Keep it so that the dog blows through the creek, runs right through it. Because eventually you're going to move to a spot in that creek where it's a little bit deeper. And the dog's going to be so confident and happy and bold with it. He's just going to go, ah, it ain't that bad. And then next thing you know, the dog doesn't even remember not swimming. It will happen that, like that. It just always does. Stuff like that clicks. But what won't work is banging our head against the wall and trying to figure out. I mean, I named 10 things here, and I was talking about how 10 things in a really short amount of time. Like, you didn't give it much time. Now, if you said, well, I tried all 10 things in one day, I'm going to say, it. there's the answer. Slow the hell down. You can't try 10 things in one day and, and go, it doesn't work. You can't try 10 things in 10 days and say they don't work because that 10 day window is part of the equation and it's just not long enough. So just be patient. Keep going in the water. You'll get them in there. So I think that I think uh, that's it. That was a, uh, not a real long pod, but a, I, I think some of these shorter ones are good too. So great question. Uh, I'll send, I sent you a message. Let you know that uh, we recorded it. Ben will get it out here. I don't know. It's a Thursday. You'll probably have it out first thing next week. Yeah, huh? Monday. So, all right, guys. Thank you so much for listening. I appreciate it more than you know. Do us a favor if you're listening where you can do a review. Please do it. If you leave us a, a rating, that would be great. Um, share it with someone that you think it might help. I, that If you can help in one way, it's our goal is to grow this and try to sh get as many people, help as many people as we can. And one of the ways that that happens is by... Folks like you that listen and enjoy it, letting someone else know. So please do us a favor if you would share it with someone that you think you might benefit from, so or might benefit from it. So thank you guys. I appreciate it. Talk to you soon. <laughs>